Hey guys. As per uh, the reaching out uh, on Twitter and other places, I have been requested to make a video about myself. And I am exceedingly reluctant to do this because perhaps you already know this, perhaps you're already on this path, but the moment you get exceptionally serious about the Word of God and you put it first, it's dominance in your life is supreme and you really do love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, Satan cannot stand up against the Word. It's intentional. It's completely intentional. Uh, he has no ability to actually destroy the truth. He can only replace it and offer a false version of it. So therefore, what he's going to do is, is allow some of my detractors who are going to watch this say, oh, he did this. Oh, he did that. Oh, he's this. Oh, he's that. That means everything he's saying is nonsense, and they're going to use that to disavow it. But ever since the dawn of time, man has ever looked for a reason to disown him because of what they want. Um, and it's generally not him. That being said, first off, you guys like the new hat? The fish symbol, the ichthus, same as the website that I talk about all the time, was the original uh, Christian symbol because the story of him meeting with uh, Simon Peter and Andrew and then filling their nets and having them walk after them, you know, as fishermen of men, um, was initially most widely understood as the symbol of the way of the Christian faith uh, after its inception. So uh, you'll no longer see that stupid coyote hat. I do, not, uh, I do not work there anymore. I will not advertise for an evil corporation anymore. This is what I'll advertise and I'll go down swinging and I don't care. I hope you like it. <sighs> About me, I hate me. I am a worm and not a man. Isaiah, you guys know this, perhaps you do. Um, no, I have not seen the face of the Lord, but I have seen his character and his person in the mind of his son, the mind of Christ, the word, long enough that I have, I hate myself to a, a, a level that I never thought was really possible. Not to the point where I want to end myself, obviously, but I'm, I'm at the point where the only thing I'm good for, and, and God forgive me if I ever speak above what my actual place is, because I, I again, I can't, I cannot honestly believe that any of you, my wonderful brothers and sisters, would ever listen to a piece of trash like me. I don't know what else to say. That being said, um, I do not come from a believing family. My father's a believer, but he's a weak Laodicean. He does not actually open his Bible in truity. He does not dig into it deeply. He does not look for the the beautiful roadmap that is the mosaic of the Bible, because that's what it is, guys. It is a giant smattering of a billion different pictures that all focus on Christ in the end. The farther back you go, it's all Jesus. It's it's a roadmap, it's a picture, it's a perfect description, it debunks itself. Anytime we feel like there's an issue in the Bible where there's uh, an inconsistency or a, a, a contradiction as it's called, the problem is not the problem is not the Bible, the problem is our language. Babylonian, blah, 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 gobbledygook, our language is the ugliest, most disgusting, most I don't even know what to call it. Pathetic, sad, disgusting sounding language uh, of any language, I think ever. It is It is very lacking in um, beauty. It is lacking in poetry. It is lacking in depth and meaning. We have to say so many words just to be able to get across what the ancients were trying to say uh, in so many, in so few simple, awesome terms that had multiple meanings at once. We can't do that in English because it's garbage. That being said, I came to the realization long ago that there really are no inconsistencies in the Bible. The problem is us. Also, too, uh, I've come to the realization that, well, a lot of people are, you know, onlyists, like KJV onlyists or, or whatever version of the Bible they think is the thing. But first off, they don't know that the King James Bible is actually the most added to and taken from version of the Bible in existence, though it is gorgeous and beautiful. And yes, there are certain verses that are perfectly true in every, in every aspect of the original meaning, whether they were added to or not. That being said, uh, the, the, the discovery of manuscripts that have more and more depth and more and more clarity uh, over the last 2,000 years has really come to a head in this last 100 years. We have what's called the Aleph, the, the, the biggest, largest manuscript that is most complete, most whole, and with the least amount of nonsense in it available now. It's actually what most modern translations are based on. Not that they're perfect, because everybody has different ways of wording things and the way that they want to get across an understanding. But the truth of the matter is, is we have actually come to a point where we know the Bible almost, if not as well, as the original fathers and the apostles. And part of the reason why I know we're in Laodicea and we are deserving to be thrown into this tribulation that's soon to come is because we have all of those tools at our disposal, but we have video games and we have indoor plumbing and we have electricity and we have cars that run on gas that don't need horses. We have so many things that make our lives spectacularly easy. If the ancients were to see us, they would understand us as 
horrifically rich, wealthy beyond our understanding. And yes, in a worldly sense, gold dripping out of our ears, but in a spiritual sense, we're darn near dead. Back to my family. Um, father, believer, weak one. Mother, fake believer, evil person, likes to claim that Jesus was a nice guy, wears shirts that says, y'all need Jesus, and goes around shaming people, shaming people um, because they don't act in a fake, pious manner like her. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I had a horrible time growing up. I'll be completely honest. It was, it was very emotionally and physically abusive. Uh, my grandfather, I was left to, I was left to live with my grandfather pretty much every time my mom got a chance to get rid of me. And he was physically abusive. I mean, like being woken up at, you know, five thirty, five 5 o'clock in the morning by, by being violently like, like hit with canes. Um, I was overweight my entire youth because my grandfather came from a time where, um, the, you know, the depression was kicking in and he lost a brother and sister to, uh, starvation, if I remember correctly, or cholera, or some, some, something. So his whole notion was get fat cause you need it. And, um, uh, he, I come to find out later on, rejected a lot of what the Bible said. And, and as far as I can tell, ended his life perhaps as an unbeliever or under the sin unto death, which is a video we will cover soon because the sin unto death is very clearly an ultimate punishment for Christians that hold on to Christ with dear, you know, fervency, but yet let go of the severity of all the things the word commands for a believer and literally becomes the worst example to other believers by living in spite of the word as a believer instead of for the Lord. So I, I didn't really come from a place that had a strong seed of faith. And actually, I'll be honest, you guys, I'm originally from Portland, um, a, a, a viper's pit, a, a cesspool of disgustingness. Man, going to church uh, growing up was awful. It was just a giant social club that was full of a bunch of watered down, lukewarm nonsense. And uh, man, I remember, I remember never wanting to go to learn necessarily, although I did feel something was there and I wanted to know him, but I never got anything deep. All I got was a bunch of stupid girls to talk to. Forgive me. I only mean the young ones untrained that uh, feminism has been leaking into the church for years. So I didn't realize it until afterward to many years later, in fact, that that was the in instigation and the impetus for a lot of their behavior and the weak men too. Don't, don't get me wrong. Um, yeah, born in Portland, uh, raised partially in a place called Ukiah, Oregon, up in the hills. Um, learned how to shoot really early, learned how to drive a car very early, like six years old. My uncle drug me out into the middle of nowhere and left me with this little diesel five-speed pickup and made me drive back. That was the most frightening time. Um, gosh, what else? Um, I was a musician in high school. I loved playing trumpet because it was something that I was way behind in the others that were in the classes with me. I was actually, I started in clarinet, which was terrible. And then I moved on to saxophone, eh, trombone, and then trumpet, you know, uh, I come to realize that it's, it's perhaps the Lord setting me up to have some symbolic, uh, foreshadowing as to what I'd be up to later on. But I am a warning. I am a warning. Perhaps I'm teaching. Okay. Um, perhaps I'm pastoring. I don't, I don't like accepting these terms, people. Again, I'm garbage. I tried going to seminary, uh, when I was married first, I've been married twice, by the way, again, more stupid choices. Um, I don't want to speak too much negative about my previous wife, but it, 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 it came to be the same kind of situation where there's an expectation of worldly, um, worldly goods and, 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 and wares and whatnot that was desired of me that, while Satan was attacking me because even during my first marriage, I was still trying to figure things out. I think the reason why my wife honestly left me, if I'm being completely bare bones, look back and see the truth honest, I was researching and I found out and come to realize very, very much early on in my marriage that the tribulational rapture idea is not only false, but a pure trick of Satan. And I actually figured this out before finding my ministry, my teacher at ichthus.com, Dr. Robert Luganbill. Um, and, and, and everything went to hell after that, I'll be honest. Uh, we had a son and uh, so many, so many terrible things happened. Some would accuse me at times of having been a womanizer, but my heart was never that way. I was never one to go out and, 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 and gather up a harem or anything. I, I, I just always wanted somebody to be close to me, to actually submit to me and to run head first as hard as they can into the arms of the Lord. And my current wife is actually that woman, although our history was terrible to begin with. Um, I was not a good man. Anybody who's watching this that perhaps knew me back then, um, I have ever been sorry for any of those things. And I, 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 I have not, I have not reproduced any of those behaviors. In fact, I've been so together with my wife, in other words, one in, in, in action and fervor that we've managed to crank out seven wonderful kids. Um, so I have eight kids total. I've been married to my current wife for, 
gosh, 12, 13 years. I don't even know. I don't even pay attention anymore. I just get up every day and work hard. I try my best not to focus on, on, on things like that. Um, yes, for a short period of time, I was, you know, attempting to be a bodybuilder and all the things that come with that. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, I am an unfortunately alpha type male, if you can't tell. Um, I have since quit all of that, and I mean all of it. I, I have nothing to do with it anymore. Um, I, I'll be honest, it's been hard for me not to want to, you know, do a, a pre-workout drink and, you know, take a bunch of creatine and, and maybe, you know, allow myself to think that perhaps I could dabble in some of that stuff. But the truth is, is it always ends up spiritually kicking me in the rear. And uh, so I've, I've had to just swear it all off and, and walk away from it, however tempting it is, just because, I don't know, my mind has a hard time letting go of the picture of strength when really it's my spirit. <sighs> what else am I missing? Um, since high school and since after high school, I perhaps the spirit was telling me, I don't know, but uh, I avoided college like the plague. Uh, not that I didn't want to go. I actually completed a few college courses in high school. I had a fairly decent GPA. You know, I was a very, very into anatomy and physiology. Um, science has always been easy for me. Rote memory is actually a pretty simple thing for me if I'm at all interested in something. I think that's a lot of the reason why the Bible is, is so important because I, I was given these gifts and skills, and I mean important in my life, by the way. It's important ultimately, perfectly so, much more than beyond all of us. Let me make that clear. Um, I was a salesman pretty early on. I actually started selling cars right when I was 18. I didn't know what else to do. Um, I, 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 I believe it's a gift. I believe the sales skill is a gift. I believe it's, I believe technically, if we're looking at the Bible, perhaps it is the gift of apologetics, the ability to not only sell an idea, but to defend it against those that would try to take from it because they just don't like it. Right. So getting somebody to love a Honda versus a Volkswagen, you know, only in this case, it's live forever, love Jesus Christ, put the word first and not follow your church, not, you know, follow doctrines of man, not be a friend of the world. It's always been, it's been over here and I've always known it deeply. I, I can't let it go. Oh, what else? Um, I spent about 10, 11 years maybe as a personal trainer, another job that I'm exceedingly good at. I'm very good at pointing out when people error. That is one thing for whatever reason I have exceedingly high skill at a very high skill level. Uh, I was able to take up, you know, the basic information and then some very advanced information regarding training. And I had, I don't want to say perfect. I don't want to say excellent. Um, but I had a very, very easy time making use of that skill in that particular job. It just so happens that working in a gym is almost as bad as working in a bar because you're surrounded by people that are superficial, addicted to the way things look, not the way things are. Um, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of adulterers in gyms. I'll be just straightforward, frank, honest with you. I have a gym at my home because I have made it a purpose in the last few years to absolutely stay away from all that nonsense. Because even now, even married, even super secure, Satan still throws nonsense at me. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Perhaps I don't need to expound upon that, but, um, alpha men are weak in that way. And I needed to accept that and move on because the gift of my family has been the most beautiful, I think probably consistent sign in my life that even though I'm garbage and I screw up constantly and I'm constantly begging for forgiveness because I need it all the time, people, all the time, no matter how successful I am with the Lord, I always need to go back to him I'm trying not to cry. I'm sorry. But the truth is, is we are that bad. What else? I, I have, I have typical proclivities, you know, I, I've, I've, who doesn't love video games? They're basically like a replacement for life. You know, we're supposed to store up heavenly rewards here by our actions and running to the word and helping others grow and learn. Well, that's kind of what video games are in a completely separate, non eternally applicable and utterly useless way. In the end, you're building up your avatar. You get to determine what it is. In other words, you get to take, you get to take the, the basis for whatever character, creature, whatever you're doing and determine its outcome versus allowing the Lord to determine it for us because he's the one who made our avatar and gave us all the capacities and the abilities to ever even go towards these rewards. So it's been very difficult to fight off these forces. It's been very difficult to not be an exceedingly angry man. I don't know if you guys can tell, perhaps, but I have a vicious anger streak. Not that I'm a violent man. I have never hit my wife. I will not ever abuse my children. They are 
They are such a wonderful gift. I approach all of that with as much fear as possible. Not that I'm perfect. I have certainly mistaken things and, 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 and crossed lines, but never to a degree that my God doesn't, never to a point to where I've deserted a, a, a massive spanking. Now I have deserved massive spankings. All men, all men, regardless of whether you've seen it, are addicted to, I don't want to say the word because YouTube hates it, pornography. I don't know what else to say. All men, I don't care who you are. Even the weakest, most low testosterone man struggles with this on some level. That being said, I have also walked away from all of that evil. And, and Jesus Christ, thank you. That was a bad one. That was hard. Um, I have struggled with drugs in the past. My father was a raging drunk for a long time. Not a violent, evil one, but you know, the, the drunk, woe is me. My wife was, ex my, my, my mother was an exceedingly controlling and evil person to him. And the fact that he made it out from all of that, they're still married, but they don't even live together. He's down in Mexico. I'm half Mexican, by the way. Uh, my last name literally means eyebrow in Spanish. Again, you guys can probably look me up. You'll see my arrest record. You'll see that I was never a violent man. Um, I don't have anything, you know, drastic or, or, or terribly evil in my past. Um, but yes, I have been caught with steroids before and I was not a good person. Not that I was not trying to be, but that I was just being, I was just being in the flesh and being an absolute idiot. Now I find myself, uh, this is my 40th year. I'll be 40 in May. And there's so much symbolism in my life that it's really hard for me to ignore, but it's also really hard for me to accept. Seven children with my current wife, eight total, you know, 7,000 years of man. Eighth day is, is proffered as the, the eternal day that never ends. Um, you know, Jesus Christ had 40 days in the desert. I've had 40 years of stupid to deal with. And maybe perhaps, God willing, I'm finally on to the ministry that he has for me. And he has a ministry for all of us, by the way. I will be talking about this. I will be talking about eternal rewards. I'll be talking about the three crowns, the 30, 60, 100 fold. I'll be talking about all of that because we all need to know it because we are all possibly capable. We are all capable of achieving any level of these, these, these rewards if we want it. But you've got you've to gotta dig. You've got to dig. You've got to put the word first. And you've got to literally learn to hate yourself. And as an aside, I finally understand, I think, what it means to hate all everyone around you. It's not that I hate them. It's just that in this flesh and in this life, we are so sinful and so stupid and even so arrogant, even when we're trying our hardest, that it's hard not to hate everything when you compare it to the perfect awesomeness of our completely awesome God. Sorry, guys, this is hard. I'm not an emotional person either, but this is the, one of the few things that literally just pulls tears to my eyes. And the only thing I ever hope from any of this is that you will wake up and that you'll grow and that you will run at him as fast and as hard as you can because there's nothing else here. Nothing. We all know this, but we're not serious enough. Some people have accused me of being too sharp tongued and too harsh. I cannot put myself on any level of any of the heroes in the Bible. They are named for a reason. God loves and respects them no end. But if I guess I were to say I were like anybody, I have a really hard time not identifying with the spirit of, of John the Baptist, Elijah perhaps, and on some levels, again, the greatest prophet of them all. And I do not claim any equality with any of them. Please don't misunderstand me. But something like Moses perhaps. But even then, I'm better at bringing people back into the fold than establishing anything. So. Moses and Elijah and John make far more sense to me. These just seem to be the behaviors I exude that I can't seem to control fully, but perhaps he's using it. Maybe that's the spirit in me. I don't know. Every now and then something comes over me and I just, I don't know. I don't know what to say other than God charged me up and put me there. I don't know if there's anything else I can say about this because the truth of the matter is, is I don't want this to be about me. This is not about me. We are all sinners. We are all twisted. We are all full of barbs from Satan's evil thorn patch of a, I want to swear so bad. This earth is garbage, people. It is absolute garbage. It only exists for free will to play out. And then in the end, it goes into the dustbin. It gets burned up and we get to watch it. And I cannot wait. And please, please join me. Let's wait for that white throne. Let's watch every one of the evil people be thrown into hell along with all of those devils. And let's, let's, let's cheer our God on into the perfect eternity while he remakes this, mm, this evil, evil place into something perfect that we get to enjoy forever with the perfect God. I hope this satisfies your guys' needs because quite honestly, I don't ever want to be the focus of any of this. Again, I'm, I'm garbage and, and I'm only here for you. And 
though I can't make up for a single sin, as we know what the word says, I would really love to undo so many years of, of nonsense. And I'm sorry I wasn't here sooner, guys. But I know our God is perfect and his timing is perfect. So if this is his doing, this is perfect in spite of all of my evil. And you guys remember that. This isn't about us. It doesn't matter what the devil points out about us. He wants us to go down. But always remember, he is guilty of far more evil than us. And his only goal is to not be replaced and to destroy God's plan, which he will absolutely fail at. And you can be a part of the team that watches him and helps him go down. So, aside from all of my foibles, please join me in faith. Let's walk hard. Let's stay on that high road. Let's never give up that narrow path and let's aim right for that narrow gate. Stay with our Lord. Bless you guys. I'm trying to hold it together. I love you guys like you don't even know. To know that I have any kind of following at all. This is such a dream come true. And I'm so scared of killing it. So I'm going to get up every day and keep doing this. And you guys be darn sure that one day Satan will get rid of this channel. So anything you find useful, download it. Keep it and save it. I will be trying to get the Rumble channel back up, but Rumble is garbage. It is very slow to upload. It is not anywhere near as supported as YouTube. I hate to say it. And eventually it will go down too, but I will do everything I can to get this over there. Please join me. I love you guys. Talk to you soon.